Hello, hello, everyone. I'm here today again with um, Bruce Sheridan for another Freedom to Feel conversation. Uh, it's very close to my heart, this idea of liberating ourselves from negative feelings, emotions, and in so many ways um, that we get ourselves or feel that we are stuck in life. So it's really wonderful to have these conversations because they kind of give us, gives us that, that sense of, um, uh, not of hope, but possibilities. You know, it makes, well, we can see clearly, that's what it is. And once we are able to see life, ourselves and others more clearly, then it's so much easier to make choices, isn't it? Uh, to see the options and just make the right choices, if we can call it that. So Bruce Sheridan is a certified EOS implementer, president and founder of Life Compass, a coach, and also the author of Well Launched Life How Young People Can Live an Intentional, Fulfilling Life. So, as I said off record, and we have been talking a lot, I have to mention the technical <laughs> issues we had. So, we had, we we're talking a lot about that instead of the, the main topic for the conversation today, but that's part of life, isn't it? And yes. even that situation that we had some technical issues here today and before when we planned to uh, to talk, that shows a lot where we are coming from. So mm -hmm. I really believe about uh, I believe in, in in being kind, number one, and being patient, which is part part of kindness anyway. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being kind and patient, Bruce. Thank you. I'm glad you know neither <laughs> one of us got frazzled. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's to see that's life happening, right? And yeah. we're just dealing with it in the moment. So talk to me about the inspiration to create Life Compass and also the purpose of your work in general and the intention mm -hmm. of writing the book. Oh, perfect. Um, I've got four boys. Their age range is 23 to 29. Yeah. So when my oldest graduated college, which was about six years ago, um, he got a degree in sport management and then he couldn't find a job. So... Uh. Oh my gosh. So yeah. he said, can I come back home? I'm like, you're always welcome home. So you, uh, can, yeah. uh, you know, you can live with me until I die is what I told him. That's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> so after three or four months, he's like, dad, I'm, I'm starting to feel guilty. I'm like, what? He goes, cause I'm not doing anything. I'm like playing video games. Uh, he goes, do you think I should get a job? I said, that would be a good idea. <laughs> so so uh, he did, he went and he got a job. Um, he was at Life Lifetime Fitness. I think it's a national company. Yeah. And he and he was doing um, sales, and he really loved it. Um, but I asked him. I said, "What do you want to do? What What is your dream?" And he said, "I don't know." Yeah. So after like three or four months of asking him that and him saying, "I don't know," I said, "Would you be willing to sit down with me?" And he said, "Absolutely." So we sat at the kitchen table. I had no plan on an agenda, no time limit. We sat there for three, almost four hours. Wow. And it felt like 15 minutes. Right. But I was asking him, you know, if you could wake up in the morning, what would make you feel so good? Mm. And you would jump out of bed and go to work. He said, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. So I said, can you promise me? I said, you're, you're probably going to slip up, but promise me you won't say, I don't know when I ask you a question. Hmm. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, it's shutting you down completely. You're saying, I don't know. Uh -huh. and you're completely shutting down. And I said, I know you can answer these questions. You're not even trying. He's like, okay, okay, I'll try. So then I went back and I said, what is your dream? And, you know, so we went through that. And a couple of times he still said, I don't know. And then we laughed about it because mm -hmm. it just came, it was his natural response. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But we can't, we went through and I actually opened up an Excel spreadsheet on my computer and we built like, what is his dream? He wanted to be a sports agent for professional athletes. Yeah. So we, we started, you know, I, I, and then we broke it up into four groups like God, family, career, and budget. And then we said, okay, what do you want out of those four things in your life? And we brainstormed and came up with three or four in each of those categories. We, When we built the budget, it was kind of um, comical because he thought he could get a beautiful apartment for $400 and a really nice car <laughs> for $100. <laughs> oh, no. and, I would, and I would still pay for his cell phone. It was like, wait yeah. a minute. 
Mm. You need, I can't believe I paid over a hundred thousand dollars for you to go to college and you can't even do a budget. <laughs> so when we were done, we had this Excel spreadsheet it, and we were there three and a half, four hours. And it felt like 15 minutes. Yeah. And at the end he said, dad, this was so helpful. <laughs> he goes, I'll tell you, I, I think every one of my friends could benefit from this. Yeah. So that was the birth of mm. my life compass. And then I actually named the document yeah. Andrew's life compass. Oh, wow. Um, and then that was the beginning of it. So I started a 501c3. I've coached probably 50 folks over the last six years. Yeah. Um, when the pandemic hit, just before the pandemic hit, I was at a networking event and this woman did a presentation. Her name is uh, Nancy Erickson and she, her company is The Book Professor. Yeah. So all she does is work with people who want to write a book to help other people. That's all uh, she does. Wow. So I saw the presentation and I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't jumping up and down to write a book, but uh, I laughed. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it just kept marinating in my mind that, wow, I remembered what my son said. I was coaching kids. And I, well, I say kids, um, 18 to 28 year old young adults. Right. And I, I reached out to her and it took me 14 months to write the book. Wow. And it was like over five hours a week of work. I didn't, I had no idea how hard <laughs> it was going to be, but I told her even when I was done, I said, you know, I'm not, I didn't write this book to make money. I wrote this book to help people. Mm. So I've been giving them out left and right. I mean, I don't, yeah. I mean, if it comes where it takes off and sells a lot, Every, all the money goes to my nonprofit. So it'll just help me build mm. more of my nonprofit. So, but um, that was the inspiration for the company, the inspiration for writing the book. Um, I also got an app. I built an app oh. because I got, I told my son, update this Excel spreadsheet every week. Yeah. And he never did. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> but I saw him with his phone all day long. And I yeah. thought, boy, if I could build an app, maybe he'll do it. So, right. There's an app that goes along with the book, um, and there's a there's a, a QR code in there at the end of the book you can read to get the app. But the app is called Life Compass. You can get it on Apple or um, uh, uh, Android, either one. Right. So that's wonderful to know. Okay, the app. Uh, I'll have a link for the app oh, great. on your video interview uh, description. It's so inspiring. I love how life unfolds in a lot of ways it's almost like uh, taking us to that place of helping ourselves and others at the same time it really yes. feels like it's conspiring almost almost like a design it absolutely is because i told my coach i said i don't care if i sell a single book yeah. it was worth my time and money to hire you mm. to write this book there were days where I was bawling so hard, I had to stop writing. I just couldn't yeah. write. I was exhausted and because yeah. I was crying so hard. Right. And I just told her, I said, this has been a life changer for me. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't sell a copy, she goes, well, don't think like that. We need to sell some copies. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, okay, but yeah. I'm just telling you how great it was, mm. the, the feeling I got of writing the book. Mm. Um, and the other funny part, I graduated mm. from Georgia Tech as an engineer. Right. Yet my entire career, I've been uh, going on 41 years out of college, um, but my entire career has been coaching business teams. Mm. So I'm being like, I've got 40 <laughs> years of expertise of right. coaching, and then right. I get led to coach young adults. It's like, right. Right. how could you, you couldn't orchestrate that if you tried to do it yourself. Right. Yeah. And that's why uh, you include faith yes. as part of your work, because how can you leave that out? It's just, um, yeah. I mean, it's an obvious connection to make, yes. which Absolutely. I make too. So I love, I mean, I absolutely love the way you talk even about these things. It's just yeah. so, it's not just inspiring. It's beyond that. It's a, uh, awesome. It's love itself happening. Yes. <laughs> I have to say that without even the the attachment to the idea of, of love, which to yeah. me it's just um, having sharing a reality here as human beings that's peaceful, that's manageable, that it's flexible. 
I, yeah. I love that. There's something about the way you express yourself in your work that really inspires me to talk this way in this moment. So thank you so much, Bruce. Uh, thank you. Yeah, for doing what you're doing and being open to life. Another question. Yeah, what came to me when you uh, we were talking about your son, that every question that you asked him, he would say, I don't know. Yeah, without hesitation. Right. Say, I don't know. And then yeah. he would kind of <laughs> walk away. It was like, <laughs> yeah. it was his built-in mechanism to <laughs> shut that conversation down. Bye. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Because we think about not knowing as something that we are not uh, um, we're not supposed to play with. Even yes. uh, we're supposed to be ashamed of saying that. And I see children and uh, young adults um, saying that, like yeah, with yeah. no, just being very honest and open. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, and I I don't. And, and I'm thinking I'm here now. There's something beautiful about that. Uh, yeah. Because that opens the door for knowledge. And mm -hmm. to me, hopefully, um, without hoping, spiritual knowledge. Yes. So that kind of uh, caught my attention. He was, um, he's still the same way. I mean, yeah. he's got a beautiful heart mm. and and he's he's going to be open and honest with you. He's not going to make something up. You know? Right, he's, right. He was, he was being brutally honest. I don't know. <laughs> It drove me crazy, but yeah, but I see the beauty, yeah, in that because you just said it, he's just being honest, yeah. you can't, you just can't lie about it or, or try to make it up. Uh, something that he is not accessible to him in this moment, so I love that. Um, well, that's very inspirational to me because we claim to know so much, yeah. but in the end. It's their surrender, isn't it? So yeah. I think now is the time to talk about surrender and trust at the same time. Talk yeah. to me for a moment about your faith and what is your understanding of God, oh, Bruce? Um, I grew up in a, um, my, my well, this is, I figured this out later, but my grandfather was abusive to his family and then my yeah. father was abusive to our family. Right. Um, so we would go to Catholic. We, I was raised Catholic. We would go to church and I, you know, as I got old enough where I could understand what the priest was saying, I would think I'd like, yeah, I really agree with that. Then we'd get in the car and my dad would smack me in the back of the head. And I'm thinking, Hi. did you even hear a word of what he said? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Tell me about it. So I left and went to college and I just didn't want to have anything to do with God or religion. I just... Yeah. I was having a good time in college. I was working I, I, and I never went back home. So as soon as I, I was 18, I left and I wasn't gonna go back home. So I worked my way through school. Um, and then I got out of school. I got a job in Miami and just happened to run with a, I, I became friends with a guy who was like in the cartel kind of yeah. level of, of drug dealing. Oh, wow. So I got into, uh, he introduced me to cocaine. And then one day I'm just, mm. I wake, I, it, it, I, it was Sunday and I was drinking and doing cocaine the whole day. Yeah. And I thought, I can't go to work. And I had never missed work in my life. Right. And I thought, I'm falling apart. Right. Like, well, I had to call my boss and lie. I don't like to lie to anybody. It just is this to me, lying is not worth it. I, it just, right. it's, a, it's a mess. Yeah. So I'm thinking now I gotta lie to my boss. And I was just the total wreck. And I, I just right. fell on my knees. And the one thing I remembered from being raised Catholic is that Jesus is at the door mm. and you have to open it mm. and tell him to come in. So I got on my knees and I said, God, you know, I've learned that you're there. And if I open the door, you're going to come in. So I'm telling you, I'm opening the door and I'm <laughs> begging you to do whatever you have to do to save my life. Because if you don't, I'm going to be dead or in prison. It's the only two choices I saw coming down the road in front of me. Yeah. Well, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy, well, then, like two or three weeks later, I go over to my best friend's apartment. I meet this girl who I never met her before or after that day. And she, 
my, my buddy's like, I need your help. I'm like, what do you need? He said, she won't sleep with me. So I'm like, oh. that's a strange. So, but I asked her, I said, why won't you sleep with him? She goes, well, I'm a Christian and I'm, and I don't believe it's right un unless mm -hmm. we're married. So I took mm -hmm. at my buddy, I go, dude, I'm not helping you. I agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she says, are you a Christian? I said, I don't know. I, I don't understand your question. She goes, well, do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. I said, yes. She said, do you believe in Jesus? And I thought about it and I said, yes. And she said, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? And then I really thought about it and I said, I don't, I don't understand your question. And then she said, well, do you believe Jesus was the son of God? I said, yes. She said, do you believe he died on the cross for your sins? I said, yes. She said, will you say a prayer with me? Mm. So I, I said, yes. So I repeated this prayer after her. And I'm telling you, it was supernatural. I felt like a bolt of lightning hit me in my chest. And I it like took my breath away. And then my buddy I knew was a Christian, even though he was not a perfect person. Yeah. Which th <laughs> that's not what it means. Yeah. And, and her, so they're both crying. And I'm like, why are you guys crying? They're like, oh, you just accepted a relationship with Jesus. And I go, well, I thought that was good. And they go, yeah, we're not crying sad. We're crying tears of joy. <laughs> yeah. So I walk away from there thinking, okay, that was interesting. But to this day, I don't know. I never met her before. again. I don't know her name. I mm. think it's an angel mm. in my life. Wow. So about three or four weeks after that, I get a DUI. So I get arrested. Yeah. brought down to the station. I have to get a lawyer. It's yeah. like three months drawn out. I go to court and the judge, the prosecutor, there were two police officers. Neither one shows up to court. Uh -huh. The prosecutor, the file was a total disaster. And the uh -huh. judge yells at him and says, if you ever come in my court, this, <laughs> this organized again, there's going to be serious consequences. And I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. So she throws the case down bangs her gavel and says dismiss for lack of prosecution wow i had no idea what that meant so my lawyer he he leans over and whispers in my ear he goes son in 35 years i've never seen this and he turns me around and pushes me towards the back of the courtroom and i'm thinking i'm going to get arrested i think right. the sheriffs are going to tackle me and i walk <laughs> out and then i find out later it's as if i never got arrested mm. So then I went back. When I got to my car, I couldn't stop bawling. And I felt the Holy Spirit just wash over me. And I realized God answered my prayer. It took four months, but I that girl got me to accept Jesus. The DUI was real when it was going on. And I went to, I started going to AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, and got my act together. And then it was as if it never happened. Wow. And I just thought to myself, wow, yes. this is. So then I couldn't get, I couldn't read the Bible enough. I started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then I found this passage where it describes what happens when you're born again. Your soul is born again. So there's an argument where Jesus is arguing with a Pharisee. And the Pharisee says, how can a grown person be shoved back in their mother's womb and be born again? And and, yeah. and God said, you don't understand. It's it's your heart, not your mm. body. Mm. So I was an infant in my walk with Jesus. And it described how what like I got hit by the bolt of lightning and all this stuff. And I thought to myself, lock this in your mind. Because I knew I was going to, I could easily fall off the path and get distracted and i'd have doubts all through my life but i told myself never forget this moment mm -hmm. you know what happened to you somebody wrote it in a book two or three thousand years ago what happened to you and nobody knows no one else knows what happened to me but me and i'm reading about it in a book so i i locked in and told myself never forget this moment because you're going to have doubts and trials and tribulations always come back so I always go back to that moment whenever I have questions or doubt God or any of that stuff. And it's been, gosh, I'm 63 and that was 25 years when that, I was 25 years old when that happened. Right. 
they, they never left you that no, that never. feeling that the realization that conviction yeah. um yeah. how do you integrate faith into your work do you only work with people who are already open to become a christian when i think of how awesome god is i have no business trying to be god so mm. i can't judge anybody i can't mm. save anybody i can't do any of that so yeah. i just want to love people and that's why mm. i said the category was god if if you want to come with whatever or whatever you want that's okay yeah. to, for me yeah. i just want to help young people figure out the struggle because i was going down right. a path at that point where i would have been in prison or dead right. i'm sure of it so i just yeah. and i feel like the older i get the wiser i get to some degree but when you're 18 and you get tossed in the hey you're an adult today on your birthday yeah. good luck with everything <laughs> it's like oh my god what, what am i supposed to do right so i really <laughs> want to help those young people just dream like a lot of the people i coach i'll get feedback from like their counselors or whoever's in their life they'll come back to me and say my child or my my mentee or my student or they said that they are so grateful you talked to them and that you listened to them and you made them realize that they can dream and that they can mm. figure out where they want to go with their life and they've never thought about that before and I just, that's my goal is to help them just think about where you want to go and, and don't feel like you have to make a hundred percent the right decision. Right. You could go off on so many tangents, but always be thinking about what is my dream and how do I set myself up to keep going towards my dreams? That's, that's my goal. It sounds very, very beautiful to me, this work of guiding people who yeah. yet don't know what they want in life yeah. to a place where they they get the feeling that they that they know in a sense of connectivity, that they're connected to themselves, connected to life, connected to others in a loving way. As I love the way you say that too, because your purpose is not to convert people, no. but to love them and guide them to a place of love yeah. that's beautiful if god uses me as a vessel to convert somebody i'll do it but I, i'm not like banging them over the head mm, and, right and excluding right. anybody it's like if you want to talk right. about your future i will help you yeah that's yeah how amazing and uh i love these things i mean what can i say i have these conversations <laughs> all the time <laughs> and then my audio podcast and now video and, and it's just like um it opens the heart to, to yes. listen to that. And yeah. it doesn't really matter what kind of faith, what we believe in. It's mm -hmm. It goes back to being open to life and mm -hmm. being willing to surrender to life. And, mm -hmm. and by doing that, it's amazing how that this feeling, the sense of love just um, yeah. sets in. It's incredible. Because yeah. I've been coaching... Mm -hmm companies since i got out of college so i've, I've coached companies for oh, it's going on for over 40 years and i don't say companies hey uh i can't coach you unless everyone on this leadership team is a, is a believer in jesus i i've never even thought about that mm, but yeah. what i feel like is yeah i can there's a passage that says be the light and don't cover your light with a with a bushel basket keep it out there and let it shine and that's what that's that's how i want to behave and i want to love people yeah. and be a light for them and help them light their path it mm -hmm. it also says you know let me light your path for you so that's kind of how i view it right uh it's beautiful but um what is your idea of freedom what is to be free when it comes to feelings and emotions have mm -hmm. you found somehow the answer for that well um i don't know I, I feel like i'm constantly going to i think i've arrived yeah but then then i go to another step and i'm like oh right. <laughs> yeah and then i think oh i arrived and i go to another step it's like, <laughs> yeah. okay so now i think i've given up on thinking that i've mm. got it because i keep mm. learning more and more and more mm. but i feel like um yeah. And you, I think you had said it somewhere earlier about choices, right? 
Yeah. You can make choices that are harmful. Yeah. And then there's choices that are uplifting. Right. Um, I think you can create good habits and bad habits. Um, I read a book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Yeah. And the thing that upset me the most was when you create a habit, and he, he says it, you know, it takes like 21 days. Everybody talks about that magic number. But when yeah. you do something repetitively and you build a habit, you, it's almost like a file in your brain's mm. computer, but you can never delete it. Uh. That really upset me because I wanted to delete the bad habits, but you can't. Yeah. So if something were to trigger you, like a friend of mine, his son mm. has struggled with alcoholism. I think he's in his 30s now and still struggles with it. And then the dad said to me the other day, he goes, you know what we figured out? Every time he has fallen is when he was getting gas. I'm uh, like, gas? He's like, yeah, because yeah. he's putting <laughs> gas in his car and he knows yeah. there's beer and alcohol in the store. Right. And he goes in and buys it and the wheels come off. His life is wrecked till he goes back into rehab. Mm -hmm. and uh, So he built a habit that when he went into the gas station, he goes to get alcohol. You cannot delete that out of your brain. Mm -hmm. So his point is to just, you have to create different responses to the triggers. Because you, when, you, when you have a habit and it gets triggered, it's going to execute the program. Right. Buy beer. I'm at a gas station. Buy beer. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out a way to, when the trigger happens, you do something different. And, and it's not easy. But the fact that you can never erase one was really shocking to me. So when you, it's just like, you know, if you haven't ridden a bike in like 30 years, you can still get on a bike and ride it because the, the program is in there. Yeah. Um, so that was mm -hmm. crazy that you, if you create bad habits, they're gonna, they can haunt you. And I think that's why so many people relapse. Something yeah. triggers them and they go back to whatever right. the drug or the alcohol, whatever it is. And then I think the other part, so choices mm -hmm. can be harmful or uplifting. Yeah. Habits are good or bad. And then friends, I found that my friends were either going to be helpful or hurtful. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I discovered personally was there's always, always somebody within your circle that would want to go drinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Like, like at the drop of hat, let's go, let's have some wine, <laughs> let's have a mat. So you got to be careful if you if you're trying to change a bad habit. Be careful; you may have to change your friends too. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Of course. Yeah. But then also the other thing I talk about is no one has the power to come inside you and make you angry. Mm. So yeah. I just choose to have love, joy peace in my, in me and it's going to be really the the probably the one thing that could maybe set me mm. off is if someone were to personally attack me my wife or my children that might make me flip a switch but other than that i i have gotten to a point in my life where ah, maybe maybe a maybe a driver cut me off too might get me <laughs> oh that yeah always <laughs> but i i think for the most part i've got just I, I be, I'm careful about what's coming in. And if someone is not acting appropriately, I actually will pray for them and think, yeah. I hope you find peace because you're not peaceful versus me getting angry and going toe to toe with them. Right. Uh, I love that approach too. So those are life changing advices and suggestions and of yeah. course practices, right, yeah. Bruce? Because yeah. it's a lifelong practice. Yes, that's the key. Um, yeah, just keep practicing. Yeah. And I wonder sometimes why do some of us engage and commit to practices and some of us don't? Um, do you feel uh, that there's also a design to that for some of us to fall actually and, and stay there? I have, there's a, a in part of my um, education in college, I learned about, I don't, I might get the word wrong. It's enthalpy or entropy or one of those that anything left alone will decay to a lower yeah. state yeah. so it takes energy to keep it at a higher state mm. so if you 
and I, and also I I was an athlete in college. I ran 110 meter hurdles and 400 meter hurdles. I worked out six days a week for three hours a day. I was in like perfect physical specimen. Now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it, takes it takes work. Energy. Right. <laughs> what I realized was to stay at the top of my ability to perform took energy. Right. You have to work hard to keep it up there. And I think it's the same thing with us. If we start mm. to slack off, it's, it's a slippery slope. I think procrastination, yeah. it, it impacts everybody. Yeah. I've got a sign right here. I keep it on my lamp. Do it now. Yeah. yeah. Because if you, it's so many other things yeah. you can do, right? And you yeah. procrastinate and you don't. So mm. I love that theory that anything left alone <laughs> will decay to a lower state. And that's kind of like a proven theorem, or maybe, I don't know if it's, but, and, and I see it too. Like if, it, yeah. you know, if a tree falls, it's gonna eventually, it'll be gone completely because it'll yeah. be, it'll, it'll decay to the ground. But if a, a tree is alive, you can run into it with a truck and it's not gonna move. Mm. Um, so yeah. it takes energy to, it takes energy and effort to, to keep yourself mm. at a level. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense too. And that's why it's so important to have those people around us, coaches yes. or therapists, whoever or whomever they are. It's so yeah. important to keep those people around us. Yeah. So and they keep motivated. Too. Right. I'm sure I, I went to um, a therapist and I went the first week. I said, how long is this going to take? Two or three weeks? She said, I don't know. So I go again the next week. I go, what do you think? Wrap it up in a couple of weeks? She goes, I don't know. So I go again. I go, we going to wrap it up today? She said, I don't know. I said, well, when are you going to know? She says, I really don't know. I mean, you may never come back again. I don't know that. And then you yeah. may come back. And yeah. as long as we're making progress, uh, you know, so four years in, I walk into her office one day and I said, hey, how you doing? And she froze. And she turned around and she said, do you realize how long have you been coming here? Huh. I, thought, I go, wow, I think it's like four years. She goes, yeah, it is. It's four years. She goes, do you realize in those four years, you never walked in my office and asked me how I was doing? And then I started to cry because I knew what that meant. I knew she was firing me. <laughs> so, she's like, don't cry, don't cry. We're not going to quit today. But uh, we got to set a limit, like maybe four more sessions. And then I'm like, why, why? She goes, I can't help you anymore. Hmm. You, you, you've just crossed that line. And now you're, you're asking me about my life and how I'm doing. And she said, it's just, I, I don't think I can help you anymore. So that's, you know, but after four yeah. years, I mean, yeah. I wish I could have done it sooner, but it was, you know, I was already 25, but I wish I'd done it when I was like 18 or something, because it really, really made a huge difference in my life. And it does. Yeah, I know. I, I never done therapy, um, not even for a long time. I think I had one session and that mm -hmm. was it. But my um i always went to spirituality that's why i love that you integrate that faith component yeah. that yeah. always helped me but yeah, yeah therapy it's inc it's like having a best friend that's yeah like a best yeah. best friend always around you i love that and you can talk about anything and not worry about it being yeah. gossiped all around the place <laughs> <laughs> right which is the same with coaches right bruce yeah Co coach um yeah if they have integrity, they'll never, they'll, they'll keep your confidence. Yeah, right. Yeah. It depends who you're talking to. But I love the idea of professional coaches and therapists because, yeah, yeah that's what they are. Professionals in yeah. the business, in the field of helping people to become yeah. better, better human beings. Well, that's where people, I tell people, I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor. Like when I coach the kids, I'm just using what I've learned over my career on how to set a strategy and then what are some of the things you need to do to get closer and closer to executing against that strategy. Yeah. If they need help with any other stuff, I'm going to refer them. I'm not going to, right. I'm not right. going to attempt to, to deal with that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a discernment, right? That's important to have when helping others. So 
you mentioned in your book you have uh the life compass uh four step proven uh process yes i would love to hear a little bit more about that although you already mentioned some amazing um tips and suggestions mm -hmm. <laughs> about mm -hmm. habits that and choices that was pretty powerful but talk yeah. to me about those four uh the life compasses four step process yes yeah. well basically i tried to keep it as simple as, as i could i don't want it to be overwhelming and complicated and it's very simple right so i want you to think about where do you want to be in the future and take some time i mean and don't put a time limit on it if it takes you an hour or it takes you four hours or four days or four weeks whatever it takes right. i just want you to think about your dreams and what do you want to do and where do you want to go with your life so the first thing is to think about it. The second thing is to write it down. It's so powerful to write it down. Right. Step three is to measure your progress. So then yeah. in the app, uh, once you put in what what you're under under the four uh, God, family, career, and budget, I only let you put up the five things because yeah. if you're trying to do a hundred things, you're never going to succeed. So I limit it to five. You can put up to five under each one. But I want you to put things in there. Like I have one that says to love my wife like mm. Jesus loved the church. Mm. That is huge. And every once in a while, she'll tell me, you don't get <laughs> green today. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> cute. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of reds in there. <laughs> but you put, there's like you, you hit red, yellow, or green, and it'll track it every day. So you have to think about where you want to go, write it down, track your results, and then you've got to refresh it every 90 days. It, it'll start to wear out and get old and you'll stop. Remember you talked about like you'll stop doing it. You won't go in the app anymore and you'll forget and you'll be like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> you got to refresh it. And I mean, seriously refresh it. Go back to step one. Take as long as you need to think about, OK, I've worked on this for 90 days. I've, I should have moved a little bit yeah. or maybe a lot. Now, what do I need to think about? And that, so you got to refresh it every 90 days or it'll get stale and, and you'll not keep yeah. going with it. Oh, wow. So the refreshing yeah, components yep. is very important, that piece. Um, that's, number, that's the fourth step. Yep. Right. Um, I love everything about it because it is that um, it's a process of self-discovery too, isn't yes. it? Yeah. And, and uh, don't be afraid to get other people's input. Yeah. So yeah. always, yeah, right, be asking questions. And I I know you made me think a lot more about, I mean, the, the, the I don't know kind of answer that your son gave. And a lot of times that sometimes is the only answer we have. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. In that moment, right, um, yeah. Bruce? Well, what I said to him, like, the very first, I, I said, what is your dream for your life? And I could see him almost saying, I don't know. <laughs> I, said, I said, take as long as you want. And he might have taken uh -huh. two or three minutes, but when you're silent for two or three minutes in the conversation, it mm -hmm. could feel like 30 minutes. Yeah. Because I could see him like really struggling, but then he calmed down yeah. and I could see the wheels in his brain turning. And then he just popped out. He goes, I want to be a professional sports agent. Yeah. So I wrote it down. I'm like, see, if you give you, I said, your brain just needs time. <laughs> it can't, it can't answer everything instantly. And, and when you throw out, I don't know immediately, you kind of give yourself permission. Now, I'm shutting that down. I'm not even going to think about it. Yeah. So I, I told him, give yourself some time. And then for the whole rest of that three or four hours we were together, Every once in a while, he would just spit out, I don't know. And I would be, and yeah. we would, you know, we'd both start laughing. But I said, yeah. give yourself time to think about it. And then I would shut up. Because if, yeah. if someone's trying to think and you're talking, then they can't think. True. So part of yeah. what I've had to learn over the years as a coach is when I yeah. be quiet. Don't mm. let them. I mean, I've had some kids I've sat there for five or ten minutes. Yeah. And as long as I could tell they were struggling with it, that I was yeah. okay. So yeah. I just let them go. And then some of the mm. things, they uh, it's been such a joy for me because then they, they'll share personal things that I'll never, you know, compromise that. But yeah. they tell me things about their parents, their friends, what's things that have happened to them. And, 
you know, and that's where if I think they need professional help, I'll say something, but I'm not, I'm just amazed at how open and honest they'll be with me. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I, I, if I can, I'll get a whiteboard and I'm just drawing everything <laughs> they're talking about and, <laughs> and tying it all together. It's so wow. much fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah. So one of my goals with my <laughs> nonprofit is to teach other people how to coach. Mm, yeah. Because I don't want to be just one. I want it to be, I think this right. thing could be all over the globe possibly. Right. It's expansion, right, Bruce? Yeah. yeah. Expanding the message, the work. I yes. love that. Yeah. Um, and that's great to know. Do you have that information on your website? Everything uh, for the coaching, um, even the coaching young people and also teaching other people to become coaches. Do you have all the information in one place? Well, that's kind of like my next frontier. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've got this list of, I want to write a guide so that people can do like uh, book clubs with my book. Uh, and yeah. I want to do a very brief guide that asks like some probing questions they can discuss it. I don't want it to be difficult or long, right. but I want them to stimulate conversation and thought. Uh, so I wanted to write a little bit of a study guide. I want to write like a six week course that a college yeah. or a church or yeah. whatever wants to put it in. They can do it and take it. I want to write the guidelines for what it would take to be a coach. Mm. And I have in my mind certification levels like bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Because I want people to trust. I don't want someone to start running around saying, oh, I'm a life compass coach. And they're not. Yeah. I, right. Right. I'm, I'm a little fearful of like imposters running with it. So I want to keep a like a list of certified yeah. coaches, and if they're not on the list, don't believe them. Right. <laughs> that's kind of, and maybe that's the New Yorker in me. I grew up in New York <laughs> in the streets. Yeah. So, um, and then you know, do background checks uh -huh. and all that mm, stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, I also would like to get partnerships. So, and this may like right now I'm in St. Louis, so I would look for partners here. But as it grows. Yeah. If there's a suicide prevention organization or mm. a drug addiction organization, or you know, find mm. good partners that, hey, call these people. You know, yeah. be able to go on my website and and be able to find pl places they can call to get help in those other areas. Right. Uh, and then donors. I'm like, I have funded everything so far. Yeah. And I'm really not good at asking people for money. <laughs> mm. So maybe I could figure that one out I, i'm just trusting that god is leading me and yeah and i'm trying to be obedient and follow that's yeah you doing. you have wonderful ideas which to me uh it's already god speaking through you yeah you yeah. know the way you speak now those sounds like wonderful a wonderful vision and plan yeah well there's a website out there and i've got my web developer we keep improving it and making it better um and, I, and, you know, I still have to work to pay my bills, so I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the website, what is the website? It's lifecomp.org. Yeah. Someone else had lifecompass.org. So it's just L-I-F-E-C-O-M-P.org. Okay. And I'll have that link under your video interview, too. Awesome. And uh, I wanted to mention, we're almost at the end of this interview today, but I wanted okay. to mention the, um, in the book, you also talk about the concepts of Sheridan stages of life. Oh, yeah. That was interesting to me. Very interesting. People that read the book go, I really was intrigued by the Sheridan <laughs> stages of yeah. life. So yeah. I have struggled with the question, why is my life going faster for years? Yeah. And I could never figure it out. And I'm not sure I have figured it out. But what I did figure out, and this is maybe part of my analytical engineering brain, yeah. like when you're one and you grow another year to two, your brain just got 100% more. Yeah. Because you lived for one year and then you lived one more year, which is 100% of what your brain was exposed to. So just going from age one to age two, you added 100% uh, into your brain. Right. Then I realized that when you're 100 and you go to 101, you add one year, mm. you're only adding 1%. Mm. 
which is, I think, so small compared to 100% of growth to your brain. Right. That's why I think, as you, and, and like we talked about, it's, it's, your brain is amazing. It holds yeah. stuff in it. So yeah. you keep piling stuff in, but it's less and less a percent of what's stored in your brain. Uh -huh. And that's why I think it feels like it's going so fast. Mm -hmm. And and then also the stages too. It was interesting when I broke it down like a debt from okay, so my target market is 18 to 28. Right. So I made I made the first stage birth till age eight on purpose. So then I could do 18 to 28, you know, 28 to 38, 38 to 48. So it right. breaks in decades as you get older. And it really like <laughs> made me realize, oh, I might only have like two or three more decades. That so that was a realization too. That hey man, don't start with this. Oh, I'm so old. Like enjoy it and embrace mm. every moment, mm. and just live your life to its fullest. Yeah, what a beautiful so, advice. Yeah, I yeah, love that. Love and there was a, um, a section where you say you write uh, two facts. Uh, one, we will all die. <laughs> and yes. two, we can only move to a higher Sheridan stage. You can yes. never go backward. Life moves on and you need to take responsibility to live the best life you can. Yes. Beautifully written, especially this last part about taking responsibility to live yes. the best life we can. Yes. I think a lot of people, I mean, no one... No one on the planet is going to care about you more than yourself. And that's, mm -hmm. it should be that way. But I think some people are like self-destructive. Yeah. And and then they blame everybody, you know, my parents, my this, my that. Like, yeah. well, you've got to take responsibility. Uh, that's uh, an advice, a suggestion that it's... Um not just extremely profound, but also necessary because yes. we see that the reason why we see so many crises in, in this reality, in this world, it's because some of us are not taking responsibility right. for our own lives, our yeah. own thoughts, our feelings. And our actions um, too. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. behavior, actions, yeah. all of that together. Something else you say in your book, you say that caught my attention, you say, Please stop for a moment, clear everything in your head, quiet the voice, and listen to what I'm about to say. You are wonderfully made. And you mm. say that again. You wrote it again. You are wonderfully made in capital letters. Uh, that, um, yeah, that made me pause because some of these, I don't know what it is. There's something about energetically even that resonates true. It's... Yeah. Yeah, that kind of stopped me when I read that. Yeah, when you just read it out loud, I felt this rush of yeah something inside of me, like right. This. And isn't it isn't it true? It's uh, hard for us to believe a lot of times, and we get caught up in the patterns that you spoke earlier, the habits, yeah. the bad habits, and the yeah. and the those programmings and conditionings that yeah. we don't see that how wonderful this yeah. is which is us um experiencing yeah. this life through this body and mind it's incredible incredible it is it is um wow it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing <laughs> it is that's a beautiful reminder so thank you so mm -hmm. much bruce for Absolutely. writing that having that in your book <laughs> so before we say goodbye for today uh would you like to add with anything that we left unsaid or read a passage in your book oh <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> I know I have one around here somewhere. Um, <laughs> let's see. I would think, um, I would probably, I, I, I love that one that you just quoted. Yeah. That we are, um, we are wonderfully made and we have to believe that in our heart. And it's like, you, you could not realize it, but, Think of how complicated we are. Our yeah. brain is functioning. <laughs> our lungs are functioning. Our heart, our kidneys, our livers, yeah. our digestive system, our muscles, our nerves, yeah. uh, the chemical reactions, the electrical reactions. How? I mean, as an engineer, 
when my kids' mm -hmm. toys would break, I would like super glue them together and duct tape them together and wire this. And they were like, Dad can fix anything. But then it, would, it might break in five minutes yeah. or it might last a week or two. But yeah. think about creating the complexity of our bodies and they last for a hundred years. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. And that's mm -hmm. where I talk about you yeah. are wonderfully made. Yeah. And In, you just need to embrace it. Right. Appreciate it, right? Yes. Have gratitude for this experience right? yes. that, that we are. Um, wow. What else can I say? I love the way you said that too. <laughs> that too. Now it, uh, it's a beautiful reminder, isn't it? It brings yeah. peace to the heart. Um, yeah. It's that moment that we really pause to appreciate this ourselves mm. and others in life itself. Yeah. And that's where interacting with you has been so nice. <laughs> you're so positive and I could feel like you love and you're warm and you care. And I mean, just imagine if everyone was like that. Um, yeah. I see. I think that's what heaven's going to be like. Ah, oh, yeah. And we want to bring heaven to earth, don't we? You see, yeah. you're doing that, right, Bruce. That's the, the job, the work that you're doing. It, it, it sounds to me, bring yeah. heaven here. Bring a little peace. I, I don't think yeah. we could even, fa well, it, huh. my perception of heaven, I can't even fathom what it's going to be. It's just, right. imagine a place where there's no darkness, no hatred, no anger, mm -hmm. no lies. I mean, it's just oh. going to be love, light, mm -hmm. and truth all the time. Mm. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you can have this now, can't you? Oh yeah, I try. I try. Your heart, yeah, just yeah. we can yeah. in this moment. I think it is possible, isn't it, to experience yeah. heaven here in this body? I really Perhaps. feel that way. <laughs> Instead of waiting. You. Do you remember about that? There's a phrase that says, you know, don't wait to be happy. There's something about that. Yeah. Uh, some people wait to be happy, but um, this is or, the perfect moment. <laughs> and also you don't like, I feel a lot of people and maybe it's just the United States. Like ha they equate happiness with stuff and right. money. Right. How much money do I have? How much stuff do I have? Right. That's never going to, I mean, it could, yeah, it'll make it, if you got me a brand new Corvette, I'm going to be happy, but it's not, it's not, it's not as fulfilling and rewarding mm -hmm. as being truly happy in your heart and, yeah. and just being, and just loving people. My yeah. wife says to me, mm -hmm. wherever you go, yeah, people love you. And I'm like, well, I love them. She goes, no, but they really love you. There's something like you don't know a stranger. You never meet a stranger. <laughs> and I don't. I mean, I just think, oh, look, God created that person and that one and that one and that one. Mm -hmm. And I begin the book with mm -hmm. we're all woven together in our womb by God. Right. And and the the mm -hmm. we are the whole, the most whole we are, are mm -hmm. is the moment we're born. Right. Because then we come into this world and our environment and our teachers and our parents and life and governments and oh oh everything just starts beating you down right. and i've been i spent eight years working with the kids in our it's birth through fifth grade so yeah. we we would get 200 kids every sunday that come in there wow. and what i saw like once they got into like third fourth and fifth grade you could already see it starting but when they're like one, two, three, and four, uh, they're so innocent yeah. and so full of love and yeah. hope and wonder and light. I just, some of these yeah. kids, I don't even know who they were. They come <laughs> up and do like this. And I pick them up and they would hug me like a oh. bear. And I don't even know this kid. And I just, <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, isn't it beautiful? Uh, oh, I love that vision God. too. Right. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, you come across that way. Your wife is right. Your wife is <laughs> very much right about that. You uh, you come across that way. Thank you so much for being the Thank inspiration you. to us. Thank you, Bruce. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. We'll be in touch again. So okay. have the website, lifecomp.org. That will right. be on your, your video interview uh, profile. And But we'll talk soon. We'll be in touch again. Okay. Thank you Thanks, so much Valeria. again. Thank you. Bye, Bye. for now, Bruce.